Wi-Fi 7 routers are steamrolling onto the Australian market, but should you upgrade to a Wi-Fi 7 router if you already have, let's say, a Wi-Fi 6E one? More importantly, should the TP-Link Archer BE800 be on your wish list? Let's try and answer that today. TP-Link has been leading the pack in packing immense amounts of features into plastic towers that could house a high-end PC, but are dedicated to wireless communication. The BE800 is one of those devices, of course. And this begs the question, is the Australian market ready for such power? Because with great power comes tapping the like button. Big thanks to TP-Link for loaning the BE800 for review. Links below, of course. Let's get started with this review of the BE800 from TP-Link. NB Co is planning multi-gig internet connections for future deployments. And if you're watching this, you must be rubbing your hands together in excitement because now you get to buy yourself a high-end router to take advantage of such speeds. Well, let me confirm, the BE800 can manage anything the NBN has to offer. In fact, probably anything for the next decade or more. Because these speeds, as ridiculous as they sound to us Australians, they're not to the rest of the world. Even if the wireless access network, also known as VLAN, was invented and patented by scientists at Cicero, Australia's national science agency, we are well behind in the technology today. A few weeks back, or maybe months, I did a full video on Wi-Fi 7. Links below if you'd like to learn more about that in, I guess, a little bit more detail. But here are the core features that makes this generation an upgrade. You see, in previous generation of wireless platforms, think Wi-Fi 6 and below, devices wanting to connect could only connect to one band at a time, either the 2.4 GHz or 5 GHz, and with Wi-Fi 6, the 6 GHz range. This means that the other bands go unused, or like with all things tech, you end up getting connected to the slowest band, without any of your input, of course. With Wi-Fi 7 MLO, which is multi-link operations, the problem is solved. It enables devices to send and receive data across multiple bands and channels simultaneously. And furthermore, Wi-Fi 7 makes full use of that 6 GHz band by doubling the bandwidth to 320 MHz. You see, the best way to describe this is by imagining a large freeway. If you triple the amount of lanes, then you'll reduce congestion. Yes, while that doesn't work in real world freeways, it does in the magical universe of wireless communication. Lastly, we have Wi-Fi 7's 4K QAM, which further enhances peak performance by adapting a higher order modulation scheme. In English, this enables a throughput of 12 bits rather than 10 bits at higher transmission rates, giving you a higher transmission efficiency. This is really only relevant for watching 4K and 8K content with no buffering, or actually loading massive files with no lag, such as game files or let's say CAD files. Lastly, I do talk about VR and AR use cases in that video, so check that below because it also helps those devices. Now, let's talk specs of the BE800 because they are magical. But let me only share the highlights rather than all the jargon. Starting off with the speeds, we have the six gigahertz band clocking at 11,520 megabytes per second on the 802.11BE. The 5 GHz band gets a nice 5,760 megabits a second on the same 802.11BE, and the long range 2.4 GHz gets a max of 1,376 megabits per second. To achieve all this, we have eight antennas. Now, it can cover a very large home, and my testing was done in a four bedroom home, and it covers the entire house in, in signal, but there was a bit of loss in the backyard, as is expected, and because it had to travel through, I guess, multiple brick walls. Nonetheless, these are excellent speeds, and as highlighted earlier multiple times, Australian speeds will not be able to saturate any of these bands. But if you're using it to do things like transferring large files from device to device on the network, this speed is extremely helpful. I transfer a lot of files from laptop to NAS boxes, and connecting it via the B800 network is so much faster and actually so much more convenient. No cables. I, of course, did multiple Wi-Fi hardwire port tests, all of which gave me close to advertised speeds, but take that with a grain of salt as your home or building material may interfere with wireless signals and the distance from the router is very material to its speed performance. But hardwired, perfect, high speeds, make sure you've got the best cables you can. Furthermore, with its beamforming capabilities, 
the BE800 is able to concentrate wireless signal strength towards the clients to extend Wi-Fi range rather than wasting power on areas where there are no devices. This is extremely helpful when you've got a lot of devices on one end of the house. We also have tri-band capabilities and a 4X4 MUMMIO to enable simultaneous communication with multiple MUMIMO clients. This of course reduces latency and increases speed. Finally, on the back of this very beautiful device, we have a 10 gigabit WAN LAN port, then a 10 gigabit SFTP plus RJ45 combo port, WAN LAN of course, and four times 2.5 five gigabit second LAN and USB 3.0, of course, ignoring the power port. Now that USB port supports formats such as MTFS, XFAT, HFS plus, FAT32, and lets you use functions such as FTP server, media server, and Samba server. Please comment below if you've ever used any of these functions because I sure haven't, even printers, most of them are wireless nowadays. Also smash the like button if you hate printers. Visually, the BE800 is absolutely unique. Of course, the centerpiece is that low resolution single color LED screen. You can display things like weather, time, text, and emojis, 3000 of them. You can then customize your own little graphics on the app and draw what you want. Now, I wish I could show you more than just this exclamation point and text scrolling by, but since I added text every time I go into the app to edit it, the app crashes. Now, I'm not sure who is to blame here, but I really did like that weather widget until I started messing around with it. So I have to fully restart it to get it back to that. Now, the design fits right by your gaming computer. Of course, if you have one, or on a shelf next to your most prized possession, a first edition Moby Dick. But it's certainly not generic, even though it looks like it belongs in Blade Runner. On the software side, the B800 supports OpenVPN, PPTP VPN, L2TP, and WireGuard VPN for both server and client side. Then, if you're adding the BE800 to your TP-Link ecosystem, fear not, this is Archer Easy Mesh compatible. You can turn this router into a mesh device, basically giving you multi-gigabit mesh Wi-Fi in your home. You see, I think there is a case to be made of getting two of these on sale because it would make a very good alternative to out-of-the-box mesh systems. Secondly, Archer's Easy Mesh allows for mixing and matching different types of routers. So if you already have one that's compatible, it is a great way to reuse old hardware, but it also means you have to stick in the TP-Link ecosystem if you like that. Price-wise, it is on sale at the moment for 749 Australian dollar roos. Amazon links below, of course. And this continues the trend of bleeding edge tech priced to pay back the R&D. And while the Australian market will have a hard time to justify the price due to our own physical limitations, and I don't mean about being upside down, but on NBN speeds, it offers great capabilities all around, and especially in the wireless home connectivity part. Now, I did find some issues, more specifically with the Wi-Fi 6 GHz SSID signal. It took a while to find when it was let's say a fair distance away from the router. It seems like the six gigahertz range, even with all its antennas, can be a little bit patchy. This isn't a problem because once you connect for the first time, it's fine after that, but it can be weird when you set it up for the first time. Speed-wise, at 15 meters away from the router, the speed can go from nearly 1800 megabits when you're closer to around 600 megabits per second, which again, for NBN internet, isn't an issue and more than likely won't be an issue for the next decade in Australia. I will need to be doing some upgrades for future testing because again, I, who like tech and buy tech and get a lot of new tech, still can't saturate these ports. Now. Let's take a quick look around the app. Since most home networking devices are app driven nowadays, this is going to be your main way to interact with any new router from basically all companies. The apps these days are pretty darn good. You can do pretty much everything you need to do on the web on the app. It shows you what devices are connected. You can even get notifications. And of course you can control things like Wi-Fi passwords and VPN settings and so on. If you want to change the little screen at the front of the BE800, you do need the app of course. I don't think the web interface is going away anytime soon, but it's interesting to see that the app has most of the options you need to configure your device. So, final thoughts. A 749 price tag is steep for a single router, I know, 
but I assume the discounts are accounting for that economic slowdown of late, which may end up even lower than $749. In my mind, it sits closer to that $500 price tag, but that's because of my bias being in Australia with slow internet. I cannot utilize the full capabilities of this device today. And by the time we can, when multi-gig internet is here from the NBN, TP-Link will come up with a brand new Wi-Fi 10 device that blows the BE800 out of the water. But that's probably five to 10 years away. Actually, probably five. I shouldn't make predictions about how quickly tech moves. Now, I think the ports in the back are what makes this device a little bit more expensive than most and also makes it a hard sell for us without a sensible use case, such as a backbone for multi-port switches. Think hundreds of ports being connected to this one 10 gigabit port, meaning you can saturate it with hundreds of devices that are hardwired. And actually, with wireless devices too because of Wi-Fi 7. So if you take advantage of the easy mesh capability and you hardwire the two devices together using their 10 gigabits ports, you again have yourself a pretty good use case with a mesh setup that compares to the TP-Link Deco BE2200, I think. And those two packs go for about a couple hundred more if you just double this at 749. So this is actually the more economical choice. In saying all that, the price of 749 Australian dollar is you get a future-proof router that if sat roughly in the middle of your home, will achieve pretty much full Wi-Fi 7 coverage at intense speeds. But let me remind you to take advantage and full advantage of this device, you will need your own Wi-Fi 7 devices. And not a lot of devices have that, a lot still sitting on that Wi-Fi 6. So you gotta be buying top-end hardware to make use of this. Now, if you do have fiber and you're planning on getting the top end plans, you're going to need something that can sustain those speeds anyway, and then share those speeds across your wireless and wired networks. And this is a great choice for that too. Furthermore, if you also want something that looks interesting on your shelf, maybe a conversation starter, and it kind of adds some value to your life with animation screens showing classics like weather icons or emojis, you know, because emojis make your day better. So. What if you're on Wi-Fi 6E? Should you upgrade to Wi-Fi 7? The answer is no, unless you have cash burning a hole in your pocket and you have nothing else to buy. Wi-Fi 7 is not going to be a big enough jump to warrant the expense. But if you already have an existing Wi-Fi 6 router with mesh compatibility, Buying that and making that as a Wi-Fi mesh system around your home, that's actually a really good idea. Otherwise, if this is gonna be your first router and you're jumping from, let's say, like a Wi-Fi 5 or a generic one you got from your ISP provider, then the BE800 is definitely worth a look. Big thanks to TP-Link for loaning the router for review. Amazon links below if you'd like to purchase it and make sure to tap the like button if you like this video and subscribe to support this channel so we get more devices like this from more brands. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you all in another one. Bye.